So in this video, I wanted to take a look at a retractable fountain pen called the Platinum Curidas. This is a really highly awaited pen. It was uh, first sort of announced or teased at the end of last year, I wanna say around November, and it was slated to come out in March, 2020. March kind of came and went and the pens were hard to find, but now you can get them without any real problems. So it's a retractable fountain pen from Platinum. It is a push button style, so not a twist style. It's a lot like the Pilot Vanishing Point, but there are a number of key differences. Just like from a fundamental standpoint of size and function, the best comparison is gonna be the Pilot Vanishing Point. Pilot, to my knowledge, has not released a retractable fountain pen before this, so it's sort of a new entrance to the market, but there are a lot of signature platinum features that you could look and see, like, oh yeah, it makes sense that this is a platinum to me. Uh, the number one will be that steel nib, which we'll get into in a minute. The Curidas sells for about $80 in the US, maybe 75, something like that. Uh, it's still import only, I think, or the, maybe some of the manuf some of the resellers in the US are starting to get them. Uh, but I bought it import from amazon.co.jp, Amazon Japan, whatever. Uh, it's a fully plastic pen, comes in a number of different body colors. I bought it in sort of like uh, maybe a, this deep green. I, I don't know what exactly what it's called, but it's a, it's a green. Uh, sold in like red, clear, blue, uh, maybe black, a few other ones, but they're mostly this sort of translucent plastic, translucent tra plastic body. Uh, metal clip. The clip you could see is sort of an inverted clip. This is the pen is upside down. So you could put it in your pocket or something like that and use the clip. The pen is really long. You can see this button by itself. These are half inch. So the button by itself is like an inch and a quarter. So uh, putting it in your pocket is require, require a very large pocket. It's certainly not going into a typical men's breast pocket in like a shirt, but it might go into uh, a bag or a pen case upside down. Even a pen case might be a stretch. The clip is removable and Platinum gives you a little tool, which I immediately lost, but it's just a little piece of plastic that sort of wedges under this clip and takes the clip off. But you could do it with your finger, no problem. It's just sort of, again, it's just a sprung steel. So you just pull this piece off and it comes off without too much of a problem. The construction, I would say, is on the outside when you're holding the pen, it's, it's, I would say it's fine. It's a, it's a pretty good feeling pen. It's not as nice as the Vanishing Point, but again, it's all plastic. It's pretty nice plastic. The plastic, I would say, is in keeping with that of the, uh, the pre-font, which is Pilot's last pen, the pre-fount, rather, which is Pilot's last fountain pen they released. That's like a $10 plastic pen. So it's a nicer plastic, but it's still plastic. All the button, all this stuff is plastic. The little window that keeps the nib from drying out is plastic. Inside, we'll see some metal parts, but ex the exterior is plastic. I will say the pen is on the thicker side. It is kind of like a vanishing point or maybe a little bit like a Lamy Dialog 3. It's a wider pen. And I, I'll, for measurements, go to unsharpen.com and you could see, but it's definitely wider. Here's it relative to a Sharpie and it's a good deal wider than uh, the Sharpie. Uh, button, you can see the button has a very long throw. It's almost comically long. It's like, why is this button so long? What is it doing? Uh, there's just a lot happening inside. There's a big spring, there's a window that's opening. So they do the button to have a really long throw, but it has to accommodate all this front section, which is the nib and the little bit of feed and all that. Could they have done it more elegantly? Probably, given some time, but it would probably have made the pen much more expensive. There's just a lot of stuff to move forward, so you get a long throw button. Other, some, some other features you see, it says Platinum made in Japan, a little bit of branding, Curidas, the name, in a sort of futuristic font, but not too much else, nothing on the clip. If you remove the clip, there is still a piece of plastic that sticks out here. So I don't really get the attraction of removing the clip. 
I've just left it, left it even though I don't think I would ever use this clip. It's not super strong and it doesn't look great. So I guess those are reasons to remove it, but there are still these little interruptions in the front of the pen. So I just find myself working around it. I really don't find the clip to be that problematic when you're writing. You just have to hold it in a way where it's not, like you're not grabbing it by the clip. On the back of the pen, there is a feature that is both a, a roll stop and a little uh, egress for the window. You see the window here? It's a little bit hard to see with the clear plastic, but the window has a little tab on the back. That tab actually goes up into that piece. So you'll see that tab goes outside of the pen and maybe someone in the comments will understand why it works like that. I think it maybe just stabilizes the window. Like could that little tab on the door or the window, whatever you want to call it, just not have been there and you didn't need this piece, this pop out here. Uh, I'm not fully clear on why Platinum did it except just to sort of stabilize all the parts internally and stop them from twisting or pushing out too far. Like if it wasn't for this piece, then maybe this whole plastic component would just want to push out the front. And this is what stops the plastic piece from moving forward. This is sort of like a break. And now the pen starts pushing forward instead of the whole apparatus going outside. But this does taper down. So I feel like that would have stopped anyway. Anyway, I'm just geeking out about the pen now, but you can see there's more to it than just having a retractable pen. Opening the pen up, we can start to see all the components and it comes apart really well. I will say that from Platinum's design. Uh, this is just the top of the barrel and the button. The button comes out without any real problem. You see it has a sort of pretty standard ratchet design or whatever this is called for the top of the pen when you, and almost all retractable pens have something like that. Here is the bottom of the Curios and now we're actually seeing some metal components. This is sort of the main inside, the main body component of the pen. It's metal and you can see there's a little channel here where the pen can move up and down, but it can't be removed. To remove the uh, what is sort of the working components on the inside, including the nib unit, you would push this down, twist it, and pull this up. And now we'll get to that in a second. Here we have the main unit of the pen, the lower barrel, I guess. You can see there is the window and the front piece. Uh, I believe there's a spring in there. Well, it may just be some sort of channels, it's hard to tell. This piece right here, this is the main component holding the pen together. That is plastic, I'm sorry, that is metal. It's fairly lightweight metal, which is uh, a little bit disappointing. I just, I don't think it's gonna break, but it has some flex to it. And I just feel like over time, it's not gonna be as effective as it could be. And then we have the main spring. It's in there, but it's a pretty impressive spring. Here we have the nib unit. And the components of this are pretty simple. We have the, I guess this would be called the feed housing. Inside there's a feed. Here is a steel nib. I bought it in fine, which we'll get to in a second. Another metal component. This is housing the cartridge. And this comes off as well. This one you would also twist and pull. And now we have the cartridge connects to the fit, I guess the feed unit. And then we have the nib, and this, this piece is plastic, it's, it's fine. There's a little uh, metal tab right here to get the cartridge housing or the cartridge protection or whatever, and to push it in and lock it in. This piece is how the pen connects, or sorry, the nib unit connects to the main body, and it slides a little bit because it's gonna have to move internally. You can use a converter, it has to be a platinum converter, but you can use a converter. I'm using the cartridge just to get the sort of factory experience. The nib on the pen is really, it looks like it should be a good nib. 
but I've had a lot of problems with this nib and it's, sorry, and it's one of the main reasons this review has taken me so long to do. Uh, this pen from the very start has been very problematic and very much unlike a platinum pen for me. I've had really great luck with platinums from the $3 preppy onto their like high end 18 carat uh, cellulose pens and things like that. I've really had the best experience with platinum pens and this pen has far away been the worst platinum pen I ever bought and I really think it's the nibs fault. It was my bad for buying the fine but usually the platinum has a nice fine and just for general note taking it works but this one has been writing extremely dry and really inconsistent. You can see the stainless steel nib it looks a lot like the nib from the standard Preppy, Procyon, Prefount, the sort of entry-level platinum pens, but it's not. It's actually a good deal smaller. It uses a similar slide-on or modular design, but it's a size down, so it's not interchangeable with a Preppy nib. One of the main reasons I was comfortable buying this uh, Curidos pen was I figured, you know what, no matter what, I will have an unlimited supply of nib replacements and I could tweak it a little bit, even though I haven't had good, looks with, good luck with retractable fountain pens in the past, I'll just pull the nib off and put on one of the many platinum nibs I have from the preppy or what have you. But it's the size down so you can't do it. And uh, yeah, this nib for me has just been a real lemon and we'll get into that in a minute. Putting this pen together is very simple. You slide this in here, the spring, this little gray piece acts as a spring stop. It slides down, you push it in, and now you'll hit some force, which now you need to sort of get past this sort of window component and open that up a little bit. Or what? there's something in here that's, I think it is the window that requires some pressure to open. Then you turn it and you go back. So pretty simple process, but the, where the construction problems come in is if you don't pay attention and you just push it down, you can see it's supposed to go in this channel right here. Push it and turn it. There's a little bit of pressure to get past this middle point, but it's not hard. But if you were just to go here, it goes in no problem. And that's just a failure to fully construct this with the best possible tolerances. This piece of metal, this little uh, C-shaped tab, just doesn't have the integrity to stop this from moving. So it goes down and it could get in the channel that way. And what that says to me is just over time, this whole piece could probably just loosen up and it's not gonna stop here unless you bend it into place repeatedly. Because right now, if it's not stopping on the way down now, what's to stop? say it will always stop on the way up? Anyway, it's not a huge deal. I haven't had any specific problems. I just don't feel really great about this component here. And it's not, from what I could tell, replaceable. It seems to be glued in to the lower housing. So if this thing breaks or bends or whatever, then I think the pen is basically shot. Then you put this back together and there you have it. So on the construction side, I would say this pen is like, I don't know, like a B minus. On the nib side, Again, maybe this pen is just a lemon for me, but I've had a lot of problems. I think on a previous video, people saw this pen spit out some ink. It's definitely been doing some light spitting of ink, just, uh, just a little light shower sometimes. And you could see little small dots there. And that's, this is a fresh piece of paper. I'm not sure exactly why this is happening, but it's definitely happening. And it seems to be happening on the way up. Uh, again, I, I have been trying to figure out what it is causing it, but something is happening there. So this is the, give it a second, this is the, okay, we're back with the Curidas. I just, did a dip. So this is the Platinum Curidas. The pen is not sold in a gold nib, even though it's not that cheap. It's about an $80 pen. It's only sold in a steel nib. It's sold in extra fine. That's not out yet. That's coming out later than the rest. 
fine and medium. I really wish I had bought the medium. I really like platinum's medium. Instead, I bought it in fine, and it's just writing too dry for me. It's uh, stopping a lot. It's having some starting problems, and it is spitting. The spitting I could see as being just maybe a lemon, and this one was not constructed, or maybe it was a little bit too early, or got bounced around in transit. Who knows, right? A lot of stuff could happen. I bought it from Amazon Japan, so I can't really return it. So that's that's on me. The uh, it is a really dry nib for me, and it's just not been writing that well. Uh, when it is going, it's fine. I really like platinum steel nibs, and I've had good luck with their fine. But this one, to me, just has been a complete wash. I'm going to contact the company and get a new nib if I can. Maybe they'll replace the nib unit. I'm not really sure what support they will offer for an international buy like this. Uh, but that is something you know going into it. I will say this nib to me seems a lot finer than a typical fine that I've gotten from Platinum and a lot drier. Uh, I've tried to give it some light tweaking, but I'm afraid if I give it any more tweaking, then the uh, it'll start spitting more and that'll go from being a really minor problem like it is now to being a more serious issue. Right now when it is writing, it's I would say it's fine. It's not great. I don't even think it's good, but it's adequate and I can get some notes out of it. And I don't mind that it's on the dry side, but when it is problematic, it is really problematic and you can't give it a shake and get it going again or just hit it with some water under the faucet. It really requires some time to, uh, to get it going. You might be squeezing the cartridge or replacing the cartridge. And uh, I just find it to be quite annoying given that it's not a cheap pen. This one will cost you about $80 right now. You can see right now I did a, uh, I did play with the pen a little bit. I got it writing and now it's going without a problem and it's a nice dry fine. F drier than a fine preppy, more like an extra fine preppy, but completely adequate. Uh, and then once it slows down, it is pretty much done for. And so, Again, maybe this one was a lemon, but on the whole, I've had a pretty bad experience with the Curios. I'm, you know, you win some, you lose some, and I could accept that, but I really, it's not a pen I could recommend. I'm gonna keep tweaking this, and I'll probably do another video if I can get this one writing well. I know a lot of people are really looking forward to this pen, and I would say it's, it kind of saddens me what a poor experience I've had with it, but I uh, definitely like the idea of the pen, and I'm become a big fan of platinum over the years, uh, especially over the past year or so. I've really, I bought a lot of platinum pens, but uh, this is one I would say just just skip it or maybe give it a couple years or wait for prices to drop and see what happens. Or if anything, if you really need it, go ahead and I would say get the medium and maybe a little bit of extra width will let you have some more ink and get better performance out of it. I'm definitely gonna try to get a medium nib for this one and see what I could do. But uh, that's probably, as much as you want to know about the Platinum Curitas. If uh, you have any other questions, please leave them below or stop by unsharpened.com. Thanks for watching.